For those of you who don't know me, my name is Maddie, and I get to be one of the pastors at Epiphany Station, and I get to walk us into the brand new year and a brand new teaching series centered around you and your brain. We're going to talk for four weeks, four conversations about your headspace, about what goes on inside of your thinking and of mine. I want to thank you for those of you who have been able to get here in person, but for those of you online, I want to make sure that all that we do here throughout these conversations is very engaging and interactive in the sense that this is not just spewing information your way. Because this is one of those things that if we're not careful, we can have all these conversations and it changes like Jack Diddley. Like it doesn't actually do what it's supposed to do. Because what it's supposed to do is as we go to God and we try and see what he wants us to know and understand, those things should change us. Not just a, an experience of his word, but an encounter with his word that changes who we are. And what we want to do is we want to win. We want to win. We want the way that our mind works, the things that we think about, to be good. But the problem that we have is that we're all here and we can acknowledge that we maybe don't win as much as we want to win. Now, like I said, there's some of the people with us online, and I don't know where you are, or maybe I do, maybe you're home in pajamas and warm and comfy, but where we're from, winter kind of just came like big smack, like hometown Thief River Falls, Minnesota. It just got really cold, and it's super dark, and that's part of the reason we're having this conversation at the start of the year, because if we're honest, we can say in a few weeks from now, we're all going to get a little weird. Like, 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 okay, we get through Christmas, everything's okay, New Year, and that's exciting, and then like you get to the end of January, and everyone gets a little bit weird, because we don't see enough of the sun, and we can't go outside without the air hurting our face and wanting to tear our skin off, and we get cabin fever, and we get weird. But what I want us to be able to do is have a conversation about how this works, about how your mind works, and instead of losing more often than not, doing things you don't want to do, falling into patterns you don't want to fall into, how it is we can actually win, how it is we can actually enjoy our thought process, how we can enjoy relational conversation, even conflict, like how we could do these things well. Because if we're not intentional, I know where we're going to go, it's where we kind of tend to go. We go into isolation. We have a lot of us that suffer and struggle with depression and anxiety. We struggle to get out of apathy when it gets into the thick of things. But what we want to do instead is win, and we can win. We can win. We absolutely can win because our God has said so. Our core text for this teaching series, what everything else is completely and totally built around, is in 2 Timothy. It's a promise that God gives to his people. This is what he said to his people. He says, give it Venmo. He says, you need definitely, to, like, we don't know if we made a big enough point about giving this morning, but it was that. No, okay. Snip that out in the edit later on. This is what he said to his people. He says that God has given us not a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and sound mind. Like that's a thing that God wants people to have, sound mind. And I want to picture I want you to picture what sound mind would actually look like. Like the next time that the old familiar thoughts come a knock in, what would it like to instead to have sound mind? The next time that your kids are kicking and screaming, it's 7 a.m., it's Monday morning, it's school day, what would it like to be walking into that with sound mind? What would it be like to have a sound mind the next time that your spouse lashes at you a little bit and you didn't deserve it? What about the next time that your boss downplays or discredits you? What about the next time a friend betrays you and you can walk into it sound of mind? Imagine what that could be like. What it could be like to win and to succeed in the war that is going on in your mind. Our first conversation, the first thing that we get to do is to kind of uproot and dig out some of the false thinking, problem thinking that we have and the power of lies in your life. The problem with lies is all too often we don't know that they're lies. That's why lies work. And the power of a lie is that if it is believed, it is as if it is true. A lie that is believed will have the same power in your life as if it is absolutely 100% completely 
true. And we can go through our entire lives and, and relationships and even our relationship to God believing lies and we build these prisons. There's no guards, there's no walls, yet there we are, stuck, restricted, limited, distracted, and destroyed away from what matters most. And here's the really bad news, if that wasn't bad news enough. The really bad news is there is a lie that you believe. Unless you're in here claiming perfection, you have a lie that you do believe. Now, it could be a small issue, it could be a big issue. But we all believe a lie in one way or another, one shape or another. Your lie that you believe today that is not true could be about you. Like you believe something about you that is absolutely not correct, but someone said it. Or you say it, and now you believe it to be true. Maybe you believe something about how valuable you actually are, why you even exist, why you even continue to draw breath. You believe a lie that diminishes your value. Maybe you've been told a lie about why you're even here, a lie about your purpose. Maybe you've been told a lie about what really matters when it comes to wealth or the enjoyment of sexuality. Maybe you've been told lies about someone close to you and you continue to hold on to those and believe those. Maybe it was slander and gossip, but you've taken it and it's true. Maybe it's a lie you have about your husband. Maybe it's a lie you've created about your wife. Maybe I've got a lie about my children or my parents. Maybe we have these lies that are just sitting there and they sit there because we don't wonder, is it actually true? It sits there and it germinates and it stews and it festers because someone once said a thing to you and it hurt and now it sits in the middle. Or you've got this old repetitive lie going on in the back of your head that you just don't seem like, feel like you can kind of shake out of there. This is the problem that we have. Lies, they're invasive, they're infective. And it's not a problem that only you have. I want to get that completely out of the way. Like if you're struggling with a lie or we've got something that we're going to talk about right now and I'm like, yeah, that's an absolute lie. I'm not pointing and poking at you and saying you're a problem person. We're problem people. We all struggle with lies. We all suffer from the effect of a lie that we believe that then has the power in our lives that it shouldn't have. And I know this because it's always been a people problem. It's never not been and it never won't be. Like when Paul, the Apostle Paul, Pastor Paul was planting churches, starting churches, he had to help them understand this war that was going to continue to go on. And he said something to one of the churches that I think actually brings open and into scope not only the problem that we have with lies, but where they're coming from and what we need to be aware of. This is something Paul once said to the Corinthians. He said, I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent. What Paul's concern is, is for, for people who say, yep, yeah, I, I, I love God and I love people and I trust what God has to say, that they will be corrupted in their thinking, that they'll go towards wrong thinking, that it can happen, that it does happen, that it was happening to those people. And he says, it's always happened, and I'm concerned. I'm concerned because ever since mankind drew his first breath, there has been lies interjected into humanity. And there's a source. And I don't know if you believe in the source, I don't even know if you believe in the interaction of what this source of lies does and what his goal is. But the devil desires, above all other things, that God's creation would not see him as God. Like his goal is to separate you from him and get you lonely so that his lies will be easier to work. His first tool that he ever used to bring destruction between God and creation was the lie. The cunning work of the serpent in the Garden of Eden is making reference to him saying to Eve, you can be just like God if you disobey him and take this all on for yourself. And it's been the same old tool ever since. He's not done anything different. It's just lies, lies to you. And he's a good repeater of lies. He's not creative and imaginative. He finds a lie that works and he sits on it. I don't know if you've had a lie that you've struggled with your entire life, but it's because he found out that it worked. 
and just keeps going and going and going. One that invades your brain space, free real estate, takes it up and just keeps going. Subtle, cunning lies, consistently and repetitively to separate you from trusting in your God. I don't know what those lies sound like to you. I don't know your brain, but I know mine. They sound like, see, see, I told you that you're worthless. I told you that you're abandonable and leaveable. It's why your dad left, because you're not worth sticking around for. And then you know what? Everyone's going to leave you eventually. Or see, I told you you would screw it up, and you did, and you didn't do it well, and you hurt people. See, I knew you would screw it up. Or see, you don't deserve good things. You're a bad person, a sinful person, and you don't deserve anything good. Anything good that you do have is just going to fall away. Like, I don't know if any of those sound familiar to you. I truly hope that they don't, but it's a little bit of a soundtrack of my mind. And these lies, they're repetitive, and they're cunning, and they're subtle, but they're always to do with core issues, things that really matter. It's not like he's out there telling lies like, I don't know, ridiculous ones, like Canada is the best country in the world or anything like that. Like he tells big ones, deep ones, meaningfuls that hurt people's feelings. Slander right there. And we lose. We lose and we miss out when we believe a lie. When a lie comes our way and we don't know what to do with it, we don't know that it's a lie, we don't know any alternative argument against it, we're the ones that lose out. The things that you wanted to do with your life, you've not done because you believed a lie. There's relationships that could have been, should have been beautiful, not just romantic, but friendship and relationship and family, beautiful, but for a lie. And the unity that human, mankind could experience, the unity that the church could experience were it not for lies, we're the ones that lose out because that's the devil's goal, it's his purpose. When Jesus once came into contact with people who just wholesale lost it, like they lost the truth, they had no idea what they were talking about, yet they were thinking to themselves, we're gonna correct Jesus Christ. He said, you're believing lies, and they come from the devil, and let me tell you what he's always been doing. In John 8, 44, he says, you are children of your father the devil, and you love to do evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character for he's a liar and the father of lies. And lies are constantly at us. Constantly, we live in a world of misinformation. You don't even have to go into a news feed. You live with a brain of misinformation that would tell you less than what is true. We take these lies and we believe them and then they kill a piece of us. They murder a piece of us and the piece we most often lose is peace. Peace that we're supposed to have. And all because we don't actually take the time to think, is it true? Like you hear a thing and it's a thing you've heard before so it's probably true. Or it's a thing that you once believed, so I'm just going to accept it as it is. Or it comes from a source that really doesn't deserve for you to believe in it, but it's an assumption I already had about myself, and so I'm going to assume. We don't actually take the time to think, is there something that I believe that's a lie? We don't do that, and because we don't do that, lies just keep swimming on in. I want to do something with you guys here. And I want you to actually do it, because if you don't do it, then I can't say well done at the end. And that's really what I'm here to do, is, is give you a big well done. I want you to do something with me to identify a lie in your life. Now, you guys, I'm going to be looking at you, and I'm going to see you. Those of you online, you're thinking, I'm going to skip this. No, stop it. You're going to do this because if we're actually going to deal with lies, we need to know how to actually see them coming. We need to know actually about to identify what they do so therefore we can call it a lie. So here's what I want you to do. Some of you have a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. I want you to grab that now and put it in front of you. At least pretend like you're grabbing it out right now. Perfect. Those of you who are more tech savvy, I want you to grab your phone. And I want you to open up notes or I want you to open up an email or even a text message to yourself. The first thing that you're going to write down, right across the top, nice and bold, capital letters, this 
is a lie. You're just going to title it, This is a Lie. You got that so far? Has everyone done that? That's perfect. Perfect. Very good. Now, I want you to think about a thing in your head. Like This is your brain pan. This is your brain space. What's a thing that keeps cropping up that robs you of joy? Like, what's a thought or, or a belief or an idea that, that comes up and when it does, it doesn't do anything good? Like, it's not like it spurs you on to good action or to fix something or solve something. It's just there to kind of suck the life out of you. Like, you think about this thing. Maybe it's a thing you once did and it's there. Maybe it's a thing someone once said, and it's there. Maybe it's something you believe about you, about how you can't, how you won't, how you shan't, and it's just there. It might be a mistake that you've made, now you identify with unforgivable. You know what? I did that thing, and if people knew about it, they wouldn't be my friend. If God knows about it, which he probably does at this point, I'm not going to be able to receive mercy. Maybe it is as your thinking process, it is something that someone you once trusted or someone with power in your life said to you or it's been repeated enough and every time you think it, it just kills you. It just tears the chest out of you. Now, that might be a lie. The thing that you're thinking might well be a lie because all that lies do is steal, kill, and destroy. Truth, even a hard truth, can lead to good things. Lies cannot. Truth can lead you to action. It can lead you to repentance. It can lead you to doing something about a problem. Those are good. All a lie will ever do is pluck and pick and take and steal. It will divide you and your spouse. It will make it difficult for you to interact with your children. It'll make it impossible for you to understand your spending habits or your eating habits. It's just there and it's just taking. If you got something in there, like if you can think, okay, this is a lie, and then this is maybe potentially one of those lies, those things that keeps just taking from me, I've got really good news. And you're thinking, it's about time. This has been a long conversation without good news. A lie has to be replaced with the truth, and here is the age-old problem. Where is the truth? Like, actually, where can the truth be found? Like I said, an age of information, over-information, misinformation, where is the truth? to be found, where could I go to find out something true about me? If you want to replace a lie that you're believing about you, you need something or someone that is an expert on you, and the hard news is you're not an expert on you. We like to think that we are, but we're not. And you know what? People that know you quite well aren't. And you could take your potential lie, you could throw it on Facebook for a poll and just kind of see how that falls out, but like, hey, I think I might be a jerk, what do you guys reckon? And just see how that one flies. I'm guessing more unfriends than anything else is what the result's gonna be. But if you wanna know the truth, well then you need an expert. And you need an expert on you, specifically you. The way that your mind works and the way that you've been created. And I don't know why you're part of this conversation. I don't know why you came in, I don't know why you're online. But one thing you must know about Epiphany is that we love God and we love people. And we don't just say we love God, we actually trust God. Like we actually think that what God says is true. And so if we're gonna come in a conversation and say what is the truth, it's our belief that God has the truth and that he is the greatest expert on you. Like he knows you better than you, better than anyone. That's his belief about himself. And if God knows you the best, then that means he'll be able to tell you what you actually need to know. Something that someone once said is to help us to relate, to understand of God's knowledge of who we are. In Psalm 139, it says this. It says, Oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything that I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge 
is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. The devil is the father of lies. Our father in heaven is the father of truth. And all God has ever wanted, ever, is for you to know the truth. Because he knows if you know the truth, the truth will lead you to him. He knows if you know the truth, the truth is going to set you free from the things that have you imprisoned. He knows that if you know the truth, it's going to lead you to wanting to love God and wanting to love people. And so God knows all these things and he wants all of these things for you. So he's done all that he can for you to know and have the truth. He saw fit to show us, give to us his message his word, his thing that he wants you to know that is the truth. And he had it all orchestrated, crafted, spoken, written down, compiled, and now, in 2022, mass-produced around the world so everyone get their hands on it. All so that we can know what the truth is. All so that we can know the answer to every single lie that would come our way. One of the most famous passages of the Bible about the Bible is in Hebrews. And it says this, that the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Another translation says, it judges our thoughts. Like that's the thing it does. It judges our thinking. Is it right thinking or is it wrong thinking? That's what it's here to do. It does this. That's what it's been gifted to us for. And we can read anything and talk about anything else. Lots of things spring from the Bible. Uh, commentaries, theological, theological works, books, conversation. But it all springs from this, that we might know the truth. So that we can maybe, if we identify a lie, this thing keeps destroying my life. We can then find where in his word, in his truth, that needn't continue evermore. At Epiphany, we believe in the authority of the Bible, not as something to keep us weighed down, but something that frees us, something that unequivocally tells us what is true so that we can live in freedom, so that lie that you've got in your head doesn't need to keep having the power that it does. If you don't have a Bible or a Bible that you understand, it's why we keep them stocked at the info desk. If you to grab one for free whenever you wish. We start today, 21 days of prayer. 21 days of prayer is this thing that uh, one of our pastors, Pete, created for us to be able to be focused on God's word and what it says about who our God is and then our ability to pray on that. You'll find those spread all the way throughout the facility leading us back to this. It is a focus of church families. These people that gather together through the week with church family pastors to be taught this, to understand the truth of this. All of that so that we not need live in lie. Now, I alluded before that there's a soundtrack in my mind that kind of goes on repeat now and again and I listen to too often. I don't share this with you to be self-indulgent, but simply maybe hopefully to help you understand how the war keeps needing to be fought. I believe a lot of lies about myself. I've been told a lot of lies, and now I believe a lot of lies too. I believe that I am a worthless person. I believe that I'm a fake that I am a liar, that I don't live perfectly and therefore I'm not doing what I should be doing, yet I stand on a platform and try and teach the word. I've been told that I am the enemy of God's people. I have been told that I am dangerous. And not like in the cool maverick from Top Gun, dangerous. Dangerous. I've been told that I shouldn't teach. I've been told that I shouldn't speak about God. I've been told all sorts of things. I've been told that I'm gonna screw this up. And the common thread that goes through my thinking is that my entire life is constantly on a knife edge. One screw up and I'm done. If I just make one more mistake, I'm out of it. I'm gonna lose everything. I'm gonna lose wife, I'm gonna lose children, I'm gonna lose church, I'm gonna lose everything. Constantly worried and afraid that if I don't live up to everyone's expectations all the time, I'm done. 
But those are consistent lies in my mind, and I don't want to get messages from you after, like, are you going to be okay? Because I think I am going to be okay because I know that they're lies. And I have counsel around them, and I have wisdom around them, I have people around me that help me. But nothing helps me more than this. Because when I start to think, you know what, I don't deserve good things, God's word says, God wants to give you good things for his glory. When I start to think to myself, I don't have purpose, I've missed the boat, I'm not going to do anything meaningful, he says, I've got things, good things, planned for you, designed for you to do, for you to walk in. And then when I think I'm a screw up, the Bible kind of says, yeah, you kind of are. Like you're not going to be perfect on your own. So don't try and set yourself up to be the all-knowing, all-trusted person. That's, that's his job. And it brings freedom. Freedom to know what is actually true. And so my hope for you as we walk out of this conversation is that even now it's just maybe the beginning of understanding that there are lies that you believe and that there is a truth that you could believe instead. The lies are here to steal, kill, and destroy, to remove every good thing from you, and the Father wants the opposite, every good thing to come to you. If we're going to win the war in our minds, it begins with this, understanding not a spirit of fear, not to be scared, but what he wants to give you is a spirit of sound mind, self-control, the ability to be in charge of what goes on in here. That's his offer from his word to you. Let me pray for us. Father God, I thank you that we can come back to square one at the beginning of this year and just admit and accept that there are imperfect thoughts, that there are lies being believed in us individually, personally. And just to admit that sign, that's part and parcel of why we need you because we don't know everything. We don't know everything to be right or wrong and so we need you. We need your word, we need your spirit, we need truth. We don't want to live imprisoned by lies. We don't want to miss out because of lies. We don't want to destroy relationships because of lies. We want to glorify you by knowing the truth and living it out. And so God, I, I ask you to speak to every single one sitting here, watching at home online, speak into their mind right now just the just clarity of what lie, big lie they've been believing and your word to come in truth to replace. I ask that we would not continue to just accept lies and accept destruction, but instead to seek and pursue the thing that you have for us, your truth to pursue. God, don't let us leave out of this room without the prayer, without the word, without the conversation between us that takes that lie and tramples it with truth. We pray for that encounter today. We pray for that to happen. In Jesus' name, amen.